Hi everybody, welcome. My name is Carly Stong and I am really in the mood to get my energy going, move my whole body, get some heat up through a flow. Rest assured, it's me teaching. So we're not gonna leave anybody behind. This is gonna leave you feeling empowered. This is gonna leave you feeling capable. Even if you've had experience doing flows before, give it a try. Only props you're gonna need today is your yoga uh, your yoga mat, a non-slip yoga mat, and a couple of blocks. My favorite blocks to use are the cork blocks. I find in this practice, they feel really sturdy. I feel like I can trust them. So if you have a couple of cork blocks, those are ideal. But if you don't have a couple of cork blocks, rest assured we can still participate in this practice together. Grab any blocks you have. And if you don't have yoga blocks at home, you can use big cans of um, soup. You could use sturdy books. You could even use um, a, a step stool, anything that's about a few inches off of the ground to create a little bit of space in this practice. Now, as with every practice, we're going to connect through our breath. But first, today we're going to be completely standing in this short practice. So let's connect with what it feels like to be in a strong and powerful stance. Coming to stand, if you're not there already, your hands can be wherever they're comfortable. They could be on the waist, they could be by your side, hands to heart, whatever feels comfortable for you. And using the muscles as high up on your legs as possible, turn your feet into a V shape. Let's do that one more time. From your standing position, as high up on the backs of your legs, ideally, you're gonna use those muscles to turn your legs out into a V shape or a dancer's first position. Now, let's root our feet down into the ground. So, finding your stance wherever you feel comfortable. For me, my feet right underneath my body feel the most comfortable. If my feet are too wide apart, although my thighs don't touch and that can feel kind of comfortable, I feel like my weight is turning in towards the big toe side of my feet. If my feet are too close together, I don't have enough room for my thighs. It does not feel sturdy. I roll to the pinky toe sides of my feet. It doesn't feel good. So pad around a little bit and find the perfect place for you where it feels like the arch of the foot is sitting right underneath your sitting bones, sitting right underneath your shoulder blades, sitting right underneath the back of the head or the center of the skull. From there, position the weight of your feet so that it's equally spread through the ball of the big toe, the ball of the pinky toe, and the center of your heel. So you have this diamond shape. And sometimes if I keep my feet on the ground but try to lift all 10 toes, I can really get a sense of those bony structures making contact. The ball or the base of the pinky toe, the ball of the big toe, and the center of the heel. So I'm gonna take those three points and feel like they're plugging in just like a plug in a wall socket. Sometimes I envision like I have roots from those three points growing down into the floor to really keep me sturdy and strong. Now, keeping your feet stationed in this way, engage your legs like you were going to turn your feet out into a V or dancer's first position. Use the big muscles at the top of the back of your leg to do so, but keep your feet rooted where they are. So all of a sudden, we have a sensation of support from the biggest muscles in our legs, as opposed to if I were to sort of hang here, I feel like my knees and my ankles are doing the work. So I've got this external rotation of the upper thighs. Now let's gauge that a little bit. It doesn't have to be 100%. Just engage till you first feel that sensation of support and let that be enough. Now that we've got a nice firm foundation, it gives a chance for our upper body to be fluid, to be soft, to let go, just like the trees rooting down through their trunk and the roots so the branches can, can flow in the wind. So yet, let's take the hands now and place them on the sides of the body. With those engaged, strong legs, breathing in and out at your rhythm of breath, 
See if you can feel your breath a little bit into the sides of the body, almost like you can feel your hands moving away from each other and back towards each other ever so slightly. Without taking big gasps of air, without too much effort, just notice if you can sort of relax a little bit into the upper body and allow for the lungs to operate at their full potential. Continuing to open in this way, keep the thumbs where they are and flip the palms so that it's almost like your hands were going to go down into your jean pockets, holding at the backs of the ribs here. See if you can send a little bit of breath into that part of your body. Good, not too much effort. You're not taking big swallowing gasps of air. It's more of like an allowing. Now, let's take all of that and put it together in our flow. The flow, the key to the flow is you're moving with your breath, not my breath, but your own breath. So when I cue inhale, when I cue exhale, let's really challenge ourselves to pause and wait for your inhalation and for your exhalation, even if that's faster or slower than what I'm cueing today. So I'm going to take my two blocks and bring them just in front of me here at about the same distance apart or maybe a little wider than my feet. And I'm facing the short edge of my mat. Coming to stand in that strong mountain, get those legs engaged, plug in, find that 360 breath into the front sides and backs of your ribs inhaling and exhaling at your rhythm of breath. When you next inhale, keep the legs engaged. We're gonna reach the arms up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, fold your body right over those hip creases. Send your bum way back in space. Lift your belly up away from the thighs and bring your hands down onto the blocks here. Drop the head, keep those legs engaged. And if you can soften the knees, think of lifting the space where your leg meets your bum. Lift that space up slightly to where the wall meets the ceiling behind you. And now as you inhale, come up to your fingertips, reach your seat back and reach your heart forward to get a big long stretch through the spine. And then let's fold again. Turn your blocks so they're not quite as high. They're just a little bit lower. And we're going to gently step the feet back, step the feet back, step the feet back. And we're going to be up in our downward facing dog. But let's come down to table just to set that up. So I have my hands on my blocks. Now, imagine as though your hands are your feet and your arms are your legs. So just like we did before, if you're able to, you can have the middle fingers facing forward. If it's more comfortable for you to grip the block, go ahead and do so. I tend to bring the heel of my hand kind of towards the back edge of the block so that I can utilize that to push back whatever feels most comfortable for you. But from here, you're going to externally rotate the arms just like we did with the legs. So the soft part of your elbow, the inside of your elbow, is going to turn forwards as opposed to facing each other. Now let's get some gliding in the shoulder blades. Glide the shoulder blades on your back towards each other like they were going to come together for a little hug. And then socially distance those shoulder blades, push them away from each other, push into the floor, feel the back of your neck engage. Maybe do that one more time. Slide them towards each other. Slide them away all the while you're keeping your arms externally rotated. Again, like your inner arm is wrapping around the outer arm. It feels like you're trying to hold a newspaper in your underarm. So let's push the floor away. You've got those shoulder blades away from each other. Externally rotate the arms. Curl your toes under and keeping a nice deep knee bend, send your seat way up in space. So keep your knees bent, take the feet wide if you want to make some more room for the belly. The key here is push into those arms, shoulder blades away from each other. 
knees generously bent and lift the space where the top of the leg plugs into the bottom of the seat. Take another breath or two here and then start to walk your feet towards your hands and your hands towards your feet. Turn the blocks up a level. You're back in your standing forward fold, albeit for me, my feet are a little wider. Inhale, I'm gonna lift up to my halfway lift, send my seat back, send my heart forward. Exhale, refold. And then you can come up through a flat back shape or roll vertebrae by vertebrae. I'm gonna take my blocks with me. My arms are heavy. Head is the last thing to lift. And then I can step forward, blocks down, and I'm ready for the same thing again. So let's string that together with your breath a couple of times. Find yourself with strong legs. The key here is to keep all of those isolated pieces just as um, just as clear, just as inter integrated as when we did them separately, even though we're going to do them as a flow. So don't let the speed of the movement interrupt um, how, how you practice those poses when they were separate. Take as long as you need to feel connected through the feet, engage through the legs. When you're ready on your inhale, take as long as that inhale takes to reach up. And as long as your exhale takes to fold down, lift the belly or move the legs wide. Halfway lift on your next inhale. Send those seat back, heart forward. Turn the block down. We're gonna step back to a downward facing dog. Take two or three breaths in down dog. Lower your knees down to table. Inhale, send the heart forward and reach the seat back through your cow pose. And then exhale back to your downward facing dog. Two or three breaths, arms are rotating outwards, shoulder blades away from each other. Walk your feet towards your hands, walk your hands towards your feet, flip those blocks and fold. Nice deep knee bend. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, refold. Go ahead and take those blocks with you. Roll to stand. Head is the last thing to lift. Let's step forward, blocks down. Let's do that one more time. Find yourself in your mountain. Coordinate your attention and breath so that when you're ready to start to flow, your inhale takes you up. Your exhale floats you forward. Nice deep knee bend here, belly off the thigh. Inhale, flat back, lengthen, get that traction in the spine. Exhale, refold, blocks down, back to your downward facing dog. Legs are still rotating outwards, just as they were when we were standing, so are the arms. Shoulder blades away from each other, one more breath. On an exhalation, take your knees to the floor. Inhale, lengthen the heart again, away from the seat, this time at an arch, so you stretch the belly. Exhale back to your downward facing dog for two or three breaths. And then walk your feet forward, walk your hands back, flip those blocks, and we fold. Halfway lift once again, refold. And then take those blocks with you. We'll roll all the way up to standing. Stepping forward, place the blocks down. Feel that sun 
warming up the body, moving all of the joints. Well, not all the joints, but moving a lot of joints from head to toe. A great way to bring some energy, some lightness, some heat. Great way to warm up the body for other types of movement. And you can flow as many times as you want. You can add variations like lunges and side bends. This is just a great basic sun salutation adapted for me. I hope you love it and I'll see you again soon.